Okay, here we have a PlayStation 3 6 axis controller which is going to be painted camouflage. Below the controller we have five screws one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to remove those and take apart the controller first. Once you've removed the five screws, you'll need to apply pressure right on the center point of the controller. By doing so, you're going to unclip the plastic at that point, which will allow to finish uh, taking apart the controller. Okay, now once you take the halves apart, then you'll have the bottom shell. and you'll have the top portion which has the battery the main board and in between L1, R1, L2 and R2 there's a small piece of plastic that will need to be removed as well so you'll just carefully proceed in removing each part in order now before you remove the board there is one screw located right here and you'll need to remove that with uh, a Phillips screwdriver now once you remove the screw you'll need to be careful when you remove this because the circuit for the switches is a flexible plastic which has conductive traces on it so you don't want to pull up very hard to where you will rip it and damage the traces which carry the signals from the switches. You can proceed by removing the, the pads which create the contact for each one of the buttons. Make sure not to get any of these pads dirty as they are uh, metallic and create the contact on these conductive pads here. Okay, the next step with the controller indicators. This is a very fragile piece of plastic. You'll want to pull down and remove carefully not to break the four tabs that come through the plastic which indicates which controller you are. Okay, so once we've removed all the parts, then you'll carefully want to store them as the paint process. Uh, will take about a day or so so that it can properly dry so make sure you put away all the screws contacts everything and we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the prepping of the plastic okay now once um, once I have all the parts sorted out basically what I'll do is I'll put all the buttons and pads in one bag I'll put the main board assembly in another bag and the screws and batteries. I'll put those in another bag. So basically these are going to make sure that they don't get lost or damaged in the process of prepping the plastic. Okay, this is the product that I purchased for sanding down. It's by Norton. It's called Steel Wool. This one is uh, number one and uh, considered a medium grade and this is light enough to where it doesn't gouge the plastic too much but enough that it it you know scruffs up the surface and you're able to um, allow for the paint to adhere properly to the plastic and this too is available from the Home Depot okay now once we go to sand this I'm going to sand all of the surfaces and now I'm going to try to preserve the sticker with the serial number so I'm going to work around this very carefully and once I go to paint it then I'll cover it and every surface this is flexible so you'll be able to get into all the crevices and once you start to sand this uh, you'll start to see that the shine starts to go away so any surface that has a shine to it 
has not been sanded properly. Okay. And you work the bottom of the controllers very well as this is where you're going to be touching more often and you want the paint to apply as properly as possible. And work this all the way into all the crevices and once you've sanded it down wash it with warm water and soap inspect it and see if you see any shiny surfaces if you see any shiny surfaces you want to make sure you go back in and continue rubbing it down with this flexible sandpaper okay once you've done the sanding then when you take a look at the controller you should notice that the controller no longer has that bright shine that it used to um, keep in mind when you use the pad for sanding it down um, you know work it into all the small crevices everything make sure that you remove the silk screening on it properly so that it doesn't come through the paint um, and after you're done you want to take a small brush wash the, the plastic with warm water and soap to assure that none of the plastic uh, dust stays within the cracks and you want to make sure if you have an air compressor go ahead and blow it out to make sure that all the water is removed from all the crevices you want to make sure you let it dry for a few minutes at that point um, the next step is going to be to apply paint now if you have the plastic prep paint then you can go ahead and spray a layer of that on the controller uh, keep in mind there's a lot of buttons there's a lot of um, moving parts so you don't want to build up a lot of paint so whenever you apply the paint it needs to be in very light coats so rather than trying to spray the controller in one shot give it a light coat we're going to let it dry and then we're going to give it another coat um, in this case I don't have the plastic prep so I'm going to proceed to the next step which is going to be the base coat of my camouflage okay now for the label and the bottom I'm going to use uh, painters tape in order to cover it now the plastic from this particular controller has to be somewhat uh, see-through uh, the injection molding they use is more of a smoke plastic so lights able to go through it so it's kinda of hard to tell on the camera but you'll see pretty much the shape of it and then I'm gonna use an exacto knife to cut the painters tape okay so now that I've put the painters tape on the control I'm gonna go ahead and add my first coat of paint now I've done this before a few times so that's why you see this box with the paint before so um, Home Depot has a series of paints which is the Rust-Oleum camouflage and they have a series of the olive green the dark brown um, in this case the tan color is the base color I want to give it so I'm going to start with this color here for the base color of my controller. Okay, so we're giving it light coats. Make sure that you move the can beyond the controller. Don't keep the can don't keep the can right on the controller as that will apply too much paint. Just want to give enough to get started and then we'll give, come back for another coat okay so in the past 30 minutes or so I've given it this is basically after my third coat um, I've waited about 10 minutes or so in between each one of the three coats I've given it now this remember this is not going to be I want to um, this is not going to be the final coat of paint because we still have the, the the patterns to add in order to give it that camo look. So 
um, your individual style is what's going to you know determine what type of pattern you want to do so in this case the next step is I'll show you some patterns I've done um, on a piece of paper with an exacto knife and we'll apply uh, to the controllers shell okay now for the patterns 